Hi, Alex here. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, I've been busy. Anyways, you guys decided unanimously before I went on hiatus, by which I mean four votes to zero, because marketing a channel was difficult. I have elected to make a video about the capuchin monkey, specifically the gracile capuchins. Gracile capuchins are monkeys of the genus Cebus. They are widespread across Central and South America. They are separated from their kin in genus Sapagus, the robust capuchin monkeys, by the Amazon River, which neither group is able to cross. Compared to robust capuchins, which are more recognizable, Gracile capuchins have long limbs and tails. Their skulls are smoother and lack the strong muscles that the robust capuchins have. Gracile capuchins weigh around 3 kilos, while the robust may weigh up to 4. Capuchin monkeys on the whole have strong opposable thumbs, something highly unusual among New World monkeys. It is one of the defining features of their family, which they share with the squirrel monkey. However, opposable thumbs may have actually been lost in multiple other lineages of New World monkey. Squirrel monkeys and capuchin monkeys are thought to have diverged evolutionarily around 14 million years ago. Capuchins have bald faces with distinctively layered hair on their head. Unlike robust capuchins, the gray saw capuchins do not have tufts on their heads. There are four universally recognized species of gray saw capuchin. The capori capuchin, the white-headed capuchin, the wedge-capped capuchin, and the white-fronted capuchin, the latter of which has many subspecies. Capuchin monkeys of both genera are arboreal quadrupeds, adapted for moving along the tops of branches. Like most such monkeys, their legs are slightly longer than their arms, which are in turn roughly the same length as their torsos. Male capuchins are larger and come equipped with big canine teeth that are used to scare rivals, but the degree of sexual dimorphism varies with the species of the capuchin. Their skulls are quite round and lack a sagittal crest, whereas the robust capuchins do retain this structure. The capuchin monkey has a long, strong thumb. Relative to the other fingers, it is the second longest of any primate, tied with a gelada at a position just behind humans. Capuchins have a highly developed precision grip and flexible hand muscles that can swivel the fingers, just like humans, a trait not seen in other families of New World monkeys. However, they struggle to flex the distal joints of their fingers independently, because as in all New World monkeys, the bellies of the deep digital flexors of the forearm are poorly separated. All New World monkeys have convergently evolved dorsal interosse muscles from the same structures as in apes. Sebid monkeys, including the capuchin, are one of only two groups of monkeys in the New World whose opponent's polysis muscle is not fused to the flexor polysis brevis, the other being the night monkeys. This may contribute to their well-developed precision grip. Capuchins have unspecialized digestive tracts that are well equipped for digesting a wide variety of plants. The stomach and intestinal enzymes are dominated by carbohydrate, carbohydrate processing enzymes and gut flora, consistent with their primarily herbivorous diet. Fruit is highly favored when available, and the carb processing flora bloom most during fruiting seasons. Many primates can see in full color. However, like most of the monkeys in the New World, capuchins cannot. Capuchin monkeys have arguably the best developed brains among the New World primates. They are sort of like the macaques of the New World in that way. In terms of a simple body weight to body size ratio, they have the largest brains of any monkey, although both the encephalization quotient and absolute neuron count are relatively unremarkable. Development of the brain in primates, including both types of capuchin monkey, scales closely to birth weight. The bigger the baby, the bigger the brain, which is tied only loosely to final body size. Capuchins live very long lives, into their 50s, by far the longest life among small monkeys. Capuchin monkeys are highly social and generally friendly. They stick their tongues out as an amicable gesture, but if you see it smile or grin, that's not a good thing because that means it's terrified. Male capuchins have a hierarchy that may be stricter or looser depending on the species, and a female's rank is largely fluid and separate from the male one. The lead male in any group will end up the father of more than half the offspring, although he does not explicitly prevent the other males from mating. Female capuchins appear to know when they are ovulating, and will mate with more dominant males during this time, while she will mate with any male when she is not ovulating. When foraging, the male monkeys take on the fringes of the group, and it is their responsibility to alert the rest when they spot a predator such as an eagle. Capuchin monkeys of both genera are effective tool users. They use stones to break nuts and some plants as insect repellents. Most of the gray style capuchin monkeys are ranked as least concerned by the IUCN, meaning they are not at all in danger of extinction, yet. However, the rainforests they call home are under attack. Due to the expansion of meat production in South America, more forests must be cut down to make room for animal feed crops such as soybeans, of which most go not to tofu, but to feed cows. 
The single best thing you can do for the Amazon rainforest is to cut down on your red meat intake, especially Brazilian grown meat, and protest the laws and grants being sold by the current Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro. Jair's main argument is that the other countries of the world have deforested too, so he ought to be allowed to. If you happen to agree that other countries have gotten an unfair advantage, but still don't want our primate friends to go extinct, you can get involved in other anti-deforestation movements, such as those in Indonesia, Canada, India, and Central Africa.